This is the Division Three virtual training for experienced coaches. I am happy to introduce several people who are going to be with us to show virtual training for Division Three. Renee LeBlanc is going to be our host today, Vice President for the Pentathlon Institute. I'd also like to introduce Patty. Patty is out of Austin and Christine Maurer as well. So they are our team in Austin. I am Mary Del Regato, president of the Pentathlon Institute. Doing virtual trainings, especially with the use of board games like Mathematics Pentathlon, it's really key to have the right webcam, the right stand, and there are a lot of different options. And these are some of the things that I found out there, and I'm going to recommend to you what I feel is best. First of all, the camera. There are different kind of webcams out there, and they range from $19 on up. The ones that we use with the Pentathlon Institute are the smaller versions of webcams. They're fairly simple. This one just happens to have a little uh, lid on it that you can open and close for privacy. Most of them don't come with that. We have tried different types of cameras. Uh, the 480p do not get a 480p. So you are gonna need 1080. So this is one that works well. It's just a, a next to go, it's a, a 1080, 1080p. Any 1080p should work just fine. The second part that you're gonna be looking at is the stand and the connections to the stand. This one here is a tripod connection. It has a little screw on the end of it. Uh, it works well with the little webcam, but if you buy a, the webcam, you have to make sure it has a tripod connection to it. Uh, once you set it up, a little more difficult to get off and on. Some of these actually do come with uh, different connections. So if you wanted to, you could take this one off, put this one on, would be able to hold a phone. It stretches out, you put your phone in it, now the stand that I prefer the most, it does have a long arm, but at the bottom, I really like this clamp. It's just a simple hand. You screw it up, screw it down to clamp it onto either the desk you're at or a shelf above the desk. It has a very long extension on it, but on the end of it, what I really like is this clamp right here. And what this clamp does, you pull it back. It's made for phones but you can also very easily take a webcam and simply insert it either this way like this or if you want a little bit more flexibility you can open this up a little bit and you can put it in here like this then you have room to move your camera around and these cameras twist also which help with getting the right angle on your game board and game pieces most people don't know this but most of these cams have a little outside silver area, have two little notches in it on each side. Those little notches are for fine focus. So you can turn those just a little bit and it will help to get your focus in a little bit better. And here's another way to set up the games used for virtual teaching. All right, what we've done here is we've taken an iPhone and if you go in as the host and you switch the cameras back and forth, that will allow you to zoom in and out to the game to get the size you want. And we have built ourselves a stand out of PVC pipes. And are you using a iPad, a webcam, a, a phone? What are you using to do this with? We're using a iPhone for this one. We've also used an iPad. Uh, the iPhone does seem to do a better job, but I think any phone camera will do. And the iPad will also zoom in and zoom out if you just take it and do like the selfie mode and then go back to the normal camera? Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is email the SCDs, the links for the labels, as well as the scripts, and then we'll also have them posted on our website. Here you can see the Contig 60 game board the chips for the red and the blue team, as well as the dice that we need to get values to put chips onto the board, and the Contig 60 scoring flag card. 
The virtual teaching of Contig 60 is very straightforward, um, very much like playing the game in person. So we have a script for each of our divisions for the virtual teaching of the MP games. And we start with the recommended materials. So you have links that will help you obtain the material, the cameras, the foam board, et cetera, labels, anything that would be special for that particular division. And here you see the positioning of the board as well as the pieces, materials. And you see that you need a white 20 by 30 foam board. Uh, the transparent dice container is super helpful. And all you have really here is dealing with the host shaking the dice container and then chip placement. Our group of four is going to be divided into teams of two. And we're going to have myself and Patty will be the red team. And let's have Renee and Chris being the blue team. So we have divided up into teams already. And as the host, I'm going to make sure to write the players' names. And I'll just use initials. We have Mary and Patty on this side and Chris and Renee on this side. So player A will be Mary and Patty. Well, they'll be red, they'll be starting, and Chris and I will be blue. So let's let the two of them start and we'll begin. Go ahead and roll the dice. Let me know to roll the dice. Okay. And now we record a six, four, and three. For the player let me know to record the values. I'm gonna show everybody so they can see it, make sure it's correct. Yes, correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and use six times three is 18 plus four is 22. Place a red chip on the 22. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Uh, now pass a flat card, please. Chris, why don't you take our turn? Okay, please roll the dice. Please record five, one, one on our side on B, player B. Is that correct? That is correct. And I will add those together. Five plus one plus one equals seven. Please place a blue chip on the seven. That is correct. Please pass the flat card. Now it's back to the A team and we're red. So please roll the dice. And please record a six, two, and one. Is that correct? That's correct. Six plus one equals seven times two equals 14. And place a red chip on 14. Right there? Yes. Pass the flag card. Over to the B team. All right, now it's my roll. I have a two, a five, and a three. I'm going to record that. Two, five, and three. I'm going to just show it to the opponent so they can see that it's correctly written. And I'm going to say five plus three is eight, minus two is six. And I'll put one on the six here. And then I'm going to subtract one from my running score. So our team, my running score is now 59. And then I'll pass the flag card to Red and it's Red's turn. Let's roll the dice. Okay. Well, big numbers. Okay, so we have, let's record five, five, and six. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to see if we can connect. So you want us to be connected so we can lower yeah. our score? Or do you want yeah. to go for very um, improbable value on the board, like 150 we could get if you multiplied 6 times 5 for 30 and 30 times 5? Or if you want to subtract something from your score? Let's see. This is what you want to see. You want to see the, the students communicating back and forth about the strategies that they want to use and different options they have based upon what might happen in the future. You can actually add the, the three values and get uh, 16 
So you would be working on our five in a row, but you wouldn't be able to subtract anything from our score of 60. Um, or we can choose 25 also and start our line too. Sure. Let's go ahead and do a five times six is 30 minus five is 25 and place a red chip on a 25. Yeah, right there. Yes. And in this game, if an opponent passes and you see something that they could do, then you can capture that pass and you would just announce capture as you would an in-person contact 60 and then state the number sentence and the host then will respond. All right, and this is a setup for juggle and you notice something a little bit different. We have numbers and letters. These are part of the downloads that you'll find under the labels on the website that you can attach to the boards. We just attach them with little pieces of tape here. So Mary, would you like to start talking about the setup? Well, first of all, the polyominoes. Do you wanna make sure that your club members can see them readily? So you've got all of them laid out, the yellow pentominoes, and then you have that second set on top of them. Then you have the blue tetrominoes, and they're on top of one another for the second set. And then you've got your green triominoes. So again, they're laid on top of one another, as well as the red domino shape, those. So those are laid on top of one another, as well as the white monominoes. And you can see you've got your labels for player A and player B. You've got your flag card. You've got the transparent container for your two dice. And then notice at the top, you've got a pentomino legend. For the polyomino selection, they can refer to the pentominoes, the yellow pieces, by shape, or they can do it by letter. And here's the script with the diagram of the layout at the top where you can see all of the pieces and how they should be placed. What's important for this game are three things, polyomino selection, polyomino placement, and the exact value method for wild six when the desired polyomino is not available in the bank. So now we'll begin to play juggle. Mary and I will be player A and Patty and Renee will be player B. So as the first person taking the turn for player A, I would tell the host to please roll the dice. And we rolled two fours. So then I would discuss with my partner, Mary, should we, what would you like to do with the two fours? Should we take two fours? I think that'd be the best way to go, yeah. I agree. So then for the fours, we would be using the blue pieces. So Mary, is there any particular shape you'd like me to choose? Well, uh, why don't you place the square in the upper left-hand corner? Okay. And why don't you decide on what to do with the other four? Okay, sounds great. So I would tell the host, please pick up the blue square and put it in 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B. In that corner, please. Right there, correct? That is correct. Okay. And then for my second four, I'd like you to choose the I piece. This one here? That's correct. And I'd like you to place it in 9A, B, C, D. Right here? Correct. Okay. And that ends my turn. And I'd pass the flag card to player B. So as you can see, when Chris made her play and asked the host to place the piece, she always stated the number or the row first before the letter or the column. So that's how we would ask the students to do it as well. One of the reasons why we have the numbers on the sides and the letters on the top is because as a host, if I'm using my hand to put pieces on, if I had the letters on the bottom, you wouldn't be able to see it when I was working with it to put the, the shape on, the polyomino on. So this is helpful for the host and the student to see what's going on the whole time. Patty, why don't you take our, our turn for us? Uh, let's roll the dice, please. Ooh, we have a six and a one. I'm going to choose the yellow T-shaped piece. Correct? Right, this one here? Yes. And place it on a 6C. Hold on one six. second. 
Hold on, hold on. Six C, okay. Yes, and uh, six D and E. Just right there. And then going down on seven D. Here. And eight D. Okay, yes. Right there. So right, is that correct right there? That's correct. For the one, we'll choose the uh, the one piece, the white one. On the on the nine I. Correct. Far corner. And pass a flat card. Good job, teammates. All right, roll the dice. Okay, I have a four and a six, which is wild. All right, let's go ahead with the T-shaped tetramino or blue piece. And if you would place that on one I, two I, three I, correct, and also two H. So right like that, is that correct? Perfect. And for the six, which is wild, let's go with the V-shaped pentomino. And if you would place that on 9, G, H, and I, and 8, I, and 7, I. So right in the corner there. Correct. And now, if you would pass the flag card. All right. All right, Betty, it's our turn. And we got a six and a one. Ooh, yes. For my six, I'm going to go ahead and take the other V piece right here. And I'm going to place it on 1A, 2A, 3A, and 1B. And one C for my sixth roll. And the one I'm going to pick up and I'm going to put it on two B right here. And then I will pass the flag card. The next game we'll be playing is Stars and Bars. And here is the setup for playing Stars and Bars. And this shows that the cards have been set up in the center playing area. Mary, would you please describe some of the labels to this game that are new when we're teaching virtually? Yes, um, we have Player A and Player B, or Team A and Team B. We have the discard pile which is to the left of the game board. We have the draw pile below that. And then we have what we refer to as the card tracking grid. Each team will have one of these. This helps them as they try to figure out how many cards have been played in each stack of the game board. This is not something that would be challengeable it's just a helpful guide to the players. Let's take a look at the script for Stars and Bars. And here's the setup. So here is the virtual script for Stars and Bars. And what I'd like to highlight here is card selection. And with that, the participant is going to describe the four attributes of the card and then the host will point to it and pick it up. The next important issue is card placement and their participant is gonna describe exactly where that card will be placed and the four attributes of that card. Then scoring, the participant will tell the host exactly how many points they scored for the play as well as what their running total is. And then finally, we have a card tracking grid for virtual play. And this is just helpful for the participants to be able to keep record of the number of cards for each stack on the game board. And now we're just gonna jump in and play. The teams will be Mary and Patty, will be player A, and the other team will be Chris and I. And we'll let 
Mary and Patty start play, player A. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm going to ask the host, Renee, to select the yellow hexagon with stars and bars. This one here. That's correct. If you would place that on the red hexagon with stars and bars. Right there. That's perfect. And now I'm going to add up the points. And I have one plus four is five, plus three is eight. I do not get the two points on the short end of the cards. So that's a total of eight. That's going to be recorded. So I, okay. that's correct. And then if you would also record on the card tracking grid that there is an additional card, we're going to do a tally system. So there's additional card in that stack. So basically the stars and bards card tracking grid, it will start with one card in there because when you start play, there is one card in the central playing area. And then we'll just add tallies for every time we add a card to any of the rectangles on the board. That way, if students choose to use this, they can tell when there's a stack of four in any of the rectangles and tell the host to turn it over or ask the host to check if there are four. They can always ask the host anytime to check if there are four on the board. So please draw a card from the draw pile. And now pass the scoring flag card. Okay, now it's Chris and my turn, and I think I'll, if you don't mind, Chris, I'll take the first round. Sure. Our team. And I'm going to play the red circle on top of the purple triangle. And I'll take two five, nine points. So I'll write down nine for Chris and I on our side of the scoring flag card. I'll mark down that I put a card in that area. I'm not going to show this every time, but just to show that I marked it down. And then I'll draw a card to end our turn. And then I'll pass the flag card to Patty and Mary. Uh, why do you think, Mary, if we use a purple hexagon on top of a yellow hexagon with a star and bar? Would that be a good move? Oh, I think that's like a perfect 10. Okay, let, let's choose a purple hexagon, please, with the stars and bars. Okay. And place it on top of the yellow hexagon with stars and bars. Yes. Uh, with a total of 10 points wow. on, the on, on the scoring card. A total score of 18. Okay. And if you can tally that also, please. Thank you. Yes. And then you said to tally it too, and it's back. Yes, tally it. There we go. And then draw a card, please. And plus a flat card. All right, Chris, let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to play in the outer playing area. And I'd like you to choose the red square with the stars and bars. Okay. And I'd like you to place that to the right of the purple hexagon with the stars and bars in the outer playing area. Right there? That is correct. Okay. So that would be a difference of five. Please record five on our scoring flag card. And if you would also, oh yes, thank you. And the running score is 14. Okay. And if you would also make a tally on our tracking grid. Show this one more and time. Can we put a tally on the outer playing area? 
Okay. And please draw a card for us for player B. Perfect. And pass the flag card. Patty, let's do an outer playing area play. Let's see, what do you think if we place the yellow rectangle with bars and no stars, and it'll be above the red triangle with stars and no bars? I think that's a good move. I'm gonna select the yellow rectangle with bars and no stars. Okay. That's correct. And if you would place it above the red triangle with stars and no bars. Okay. And for that play, I would get seven points. So if you would record that on the scoring flag card. And so now my total running score is 25. Also, Go ahead and record in on the tally sheet one tally mark. Okay. And now if you would draw one card for my hand and then pass the scoring flag card. All right, the game has advanced a little bit. We want to show you how many cards are in each area. And it's Chris in my turn. So, Chris, I'm thinking we play the card with the stars and the red triangle. We put it on top of the red hexagon. What do you think Great. about that play? Great play. And the reason why is because I know I've got eight points right off of the bat, the two fours. And we have three diagonally both ways for a total of 14 points. Does that sound correct, Chris? That sounds correct to me. So I'll record 14 on the tally. I'll add those two up, so we're up to 28. Oops. See that? Mm -hmm. I'll mark tally where we put it. And now I see that there are four cards in that stack, so I would either ask the host, which is myself, or uh, to, to verify that there are four cards in that stack, and I'll pick it up just to verify. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna request the host to turn it over. I'm gonna request the host to draw a card. And I will pass the flag card. So this segment shows how you play stars and bars virtually. And now we'll move on to play Queens and Guards. So here's the setup for the virtual teaching of Queens and Guards. And you can see that we have numbered the chips. So you've got your six red guards numbered one through six, as well as your six blue guards also numbered one through six. And you can use either a paint marker or stickers or whatever just to distinguish the number of the different colored chips. And of course, you've got your red and blue pawns, so we don't have to do anything there. And as far as movement is concerned, you can describe moving on the same type of band or going to a different band. So you've got your orange and yellow bands. You can use the terms up, down, left, right, diagonally up or diagonally down, left or right. And all of this is described in the virtual script for Queens and Guards. Okay, for the team for Queens and Guards, it'll be Patty and myself and Chris and Mary. Chris and Mary will be blue and we'll just say the two of them can go ahead and start. Go ahead, Chris, you begin. All right, I would like you to move our number one blue guard down to the right onto the orange band, please. This one here? Correct. There? Yes, and pass the flag card. Patty, why don't you take our turn? We are going to move the number four chip, the red chip, 
Yes, up to the next band. Okay, up to the orange right. band, okay. And then diagonally up to the left, okay. And pause a flat card. And now if you would move the blue five chip or guard diagonally up to the right, which is on the orange band. That is correct. And please pass the flag card. Wow, Patty is in my turn. I'm gonna go ahead and move our red queen to the left into the orange band. And I'm gonna pass the flag card. I would like you to move our four guard chip to the left into the orange band. Please pass the flag card. We will move our red number four chip is gonna go back to the yellow band, okay. straight uh, to the, located to the right hand side. So right here? Correct. Yeah, we had to move it back to the yellow band, so that's a good move. Pause the flag card, please. All right, blue's turn. Now, if you would move our blue queen to the orange band and to the right. Right there? Yes. And pass the flag card. Okay. And Patty, I'm going to move the queen towards the center on okay. the yellow band. One space to the left and pass the flag card. So queens and guards played virtually is very much like in-person queens and guards. Um, you just need to keep in mind, you must number your chips and of course, refer to your orange and yellow bands as well as your directionality terms. Next, let's do Fabadifi. So here we have the layout for the Fabadifi game looking very similar to the in-person version. And you have the labels for player A and player B. This is going to be helpful when players make a trick and you determine who wins the game. So now, if we look at the script, so you have fraction strip placement, and this is where the participant tells the host to place strips from the deck into the show box. And it's also important when there are less than three strips in the placeholder rectangles of the board, then the participant must tell the host just exactly how many and the placement of the strips. And then the next key element when you're playing this virtually is when the participant attempts to make a trick for each turn, number one, if they actually can make a trick, they're going to describe the color as well as the value of the two strips that equal the value in the show box. Then number two, if a trick cannot be made, they're going to describe to the host which placeholder rectangle they're going to place the strip that was in the show box into one of those rectangles. And they'll be specific talking about, is it the second rectangle from the top and on the right, or it could be the third rectangle from the top and on the left. And then the host points to and places in the corresponding described rectangles. So let's start playing the game. And the teams will be player A, Patty and Chris, and player B, uh, myself and Mary. To start with, since we know that uh, Chris and Patty are player A, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the strips out and let them take their first turn. Move the flag card to their side. Uh, Chris, I see that our answer box has the orange strip of seven twelves. I think we can do an addition here. What do you think? I think you're right. I think the blue one fourth plus the red two sixths equals the orange seven twelfths. I agree. So the host, would you please pick up those three strips and set them on player A side?
please pass the flag card. All right, Mary, now it's our turn. Okay, and since we have less than three strips out in the placeholder rectangles, I need to tell the host, which is you, if you would take from the deck two strips, and would you take that first strip, the top strip, and would you place it on the first placeholder rectangle on the right? And now if you would take the second strip to make a total of three on the board, and if you would place it on the second placeholder on the left. And now if you would turn a strip from the deck into the show box. Right there. 10 twelfths is the answer. And I do not see us being able to either add or subtract to get 10 twelfths. I don't either, partner. <laughs> okay then, um, would you please take the strip from the show box and place it in the top middle section. Okay, and that's good that you're saying that. You're using the middle, the right, and the left and saying what order they're in because that helps me know where to place them. Good, okay, and now you can pass the flag card. All right. Okay, let's, let's move a, a strip into the show box, please. What do you think, Chris? Looks like we have eight twelfths is our total. And I don't see any addition or subtraction that we could do, do you? So yeah, I don't see it either. So we're gonna move the orange strip from the show box to the left-hand side top rectangle. Right here? Yes, please, and pass a flat card. Very good. All right, Mary, it's our turn. I'm going to go ahead and take one out of the deck and put it in the show box for us. Now we have four twelfths. I see that we can make a trick, Mary. The orange ten twelfths compared to the green one half would equal four twelfths. Does that sound correct to you? Sure does. So let's take those three strips and make a trick and put them on our side and then we'll pass the flag card to Chris and Patty and then it's their turn. Okay, if you could please turn over a strip, put it in the show box for us. Okay, Patty, I see that we have a red three sixths in the show box. Do you see anything we can do? I don't see anything. I don't either. Please move the red three six strip into the top middle rectangle and pass the flag card. Right there? Yes, please. And Mary, it's your turn. It's our turn, but you, your turn to take the turn. All righty. If you would turn the uh, top strip from the deck into the show box. And so we have one third. And if we do subtraction, we could get a trick. So if you would point to the blue four fourths okay. compared to the orange eight twelfths. Right here, okay. That equals the yellow one third strip in the show box. Okay. So if you would take those three strips to form the trick. And crisscross that with our existing trick. And that just makes it easier to count them at the end. As you, all you experienced coaches already know. And that sums up how to play Fabadiffy virtually. <laughs>